in this video, uh, we will solve the problems in the test. The first problem, uh, we are required to solve the wave equation uh, UTT equals 16 UXX. That is the equation. And uh, the stream of length 1, which both end upon a fix at high 0 all the time. Uh, this means uh, zero directly boundary condition. So we have a stream. We have a stream lies on the interval zero one because the stream, the length of the stream is one. So if the left end point is x equal to zero, then the right end point is x equal to one. So that is a stream, and uh, it it says that the the end points, both end points, a high zero. This means that if you use the u xt to denote the displacement of the stream at the location x and the time t so so here is x this is u sorry so this is this is the displacement is u okay at every different point x at every moment t you has a displacement okay so uh both end point are fixed at high zero for all point, uh, all time. This means that. This means that. U. Zero. T. Ah, uh, when x equal to zero, that is uh, the left end points. Uh, high zero means that this is zero. Similarly, for the right end point x equal to one, this is also zero. U one when x equal to one t is zero for all time that is for all t so this is the boundary condition right and then uh the string initially in equilibrium means that at the initial moment when t when t equal to zero when t equal to zero at the initial moment the string lies on the x like on the in the on the interval this is the initial uh initial uh, displacement at every point when t equal to zero, u is zero. This is what uh, equilibrium uh, uh, means. Okay, so therefore u x zero is zero. So this is a uh, one of the initial condition. But we know for wave equation, uh, for the initial condition, you not only need the initial this. Uh, initial displacement or initial position. In our case, the initial position is zero. Ah, okay, okay. Or the initial uh, displacement is zero. Not only you need the initial displacement, you also need the initial uh, velocity. So the problem says that initial velocity is given by one minus two cosine pi x. So what is the initial velocity? Since u is the displacement, the partial derivative of the partial derivative of u, which is back to t, this gives you the velocity. Now, the velocity at the point x, and uh, at the initial moment, that is t equal to zero. So this is given by the function in the problem. 1 minus 2 cosine pi x. Okay, so this is the initial velocity here. Okay, so u is the displacement. Ut is the partial derivative of u, which is respect to t, that is velocity. So ut, the partial derivative function of u, evaluated at xt, means that the velocity at the point x at time t. Okay, ah, so this ut xt, this function, is the velocity function at every moment, every position. But uh, the the problem says that initial velocity that means when t equal to zero. So when t equal to zero, what is uh, u x t that is u x zero is given. Okay, that is the setting of the problem. So we are required to formulate the mathematical problem. So as the as we did in the practice test uh, to formulate the problem mathematically, you simply write down the equation and the collect. Uh, information we present here, the initial condition and the boundary condition. So this is the equation. And uh, 
So this is the boundary condition. Ah, uh, boundary condition. The yes. Uh, sorry. Oh, maybe. So this is the u x t a uh, u zero t. That is when x equal to zero. This is just the just the uh, boundary condition at the left end point. Similarly, the u one t is the boundary condition at the right end point, as we just talk about. Okay, this is the initial. Uh, sorry, the boundary condition when x equal to zero and x equal to t. Okay, this is boundary condition. Now. For initial condition, ah, when t equal to zero, so this is the initial position or initial uh, displacement. Ah, according to the description in the problem, ah, this function is identically zero. In general, you in general your u x t u is a function of x and t. When you fix t by zero, u is still a function of x. So in general uxt and uh, ux0 should be a function of x but uh, in our case this function of x f is identically zero okay identically zero here okay so this is one of the initial condition but uh, as i emphasize for the wave equation you still need the initial velocity where we also know the in initial velocity that is when t equal to zero uh, utx uh, zero uh, this is given by this function 1 minus 2 cosine pi x so this is the mathematical formulation for the problem um, I have a glance at the uh, papers you submitted then uh, some of the student uh, forced to uh, some of the student didn't write the initial velocity uh, they only write the first three statement here this is not complete uh, you only have an equation and the boundary condition and the initial displacement, uh, this is not enough. You still need to state the initial velocity, okay? So this is the first question in this problem. Now let's go to the next question. Uh, we are required to find the product solution and uh, state the eigenvalue problem, okay? Uh, to find the product solution, we assume that a solution U uh, is of this form, uh, x, x, and t, t. This is a solution. Uh, uh, the product of a function of x and a function of t. Suppose we have such a solution, then to find the condition that capital X and capital T uh, have to satisfy, we so compute the derivatives appears in the equation. Well, okay, we should uh, compute the derivative appears in the equation. Our equation is utt equals 16 uxx. So you need to compute the utt. Of course, utt is x t double prime, and the uxx is x double prime t. So the equation, the equation, utt equals 6, utt equals uh, 16 uxx becomes x t double prime plus 16 x double prime t. Therefore, uh, divided both sides, Divided both sides of the equality. Divided both sides of this equality by sixteen x t. Divided by sixteen x t, we get t double prime over sixteen t equals x double prime x. Uh, as usual, the left hand side is a function of t, and the right hand side is a function of x. Therefore, uh, it must be a constant. <laughs> So there is some real number, lambda, such that the common value of uh, the quantity in this equality is minus lambda. Lambda is a constant, okay? Then, uh, so t satisfies this equality. t double prime plus 16t lambda equals to zero. So this is an ODE, second order ODE for capital T. And uh, this is the second order ODE for capital X, okay? Uh, these two ODE uh, are obtained from this equality because the right hand side minus lambda is a constant. Okay, so uh, you omit omit this one, you get the ODE for for t. And if you omit 
Omit this one, you get ODE for X. Anyway, you have these two ODE, okay? So, uh, so this is, these are the ODE for capital X and capital T has to satisfy. But uh, uh, we still need to take the boundary condition into account. Our boundary condition is what? Boundary condition, ah, boundary, boundary condition is here. Okay? Boundary condition is here. U0 T is 0, U1 T is 0. Therefore, uh, U0 T is 0. So, uh, but U0 T is X0 T T. Okay? Uh, so, X0 has to be 0. Uh, if X0 is not 0, then capital T is identically 0. Then the resulting solution U, the solution U, you be identically zero. The trivial solution we don't want a trivial solution, so t t t could not be zero. Therefore, x zero has to be zero. Okay. Then, uh, similarly, you consider another the other boundary condition at the right end point x equal to one. So u one t is zero. As before, u one t is s one t t, and since we don't want the t t to be identically zero, so x one has to be zero. So this. This conclusion, together with the ODE for capital X, consists of the eigenvalue problem for capital X. Okay, so the eigenvalue problem is this: ah, x double prime plus lambda x equals to zero, and x zero equals x one is zero. Okay, this complete the question two for this problem. Okay, next question three we should. Mm, we will solve this eigenvalue problem. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I I learned from what I saw in your paper. Some students are forced to uh, get this conclusion. So they, in their answer, they, they didn't uh, present the boundary condition for this ODE for X. Of course, this uh, answer is not complete. Okay, now you should understand how to do this problem. Now, let's resolve the eigenvalue problem at the bottom of this page. To solve this eigenvalue problem, let us write the ODE here. x double prime plus lambda x equal to 0. And x 0 is equals to x1 equals to 0. Ah, that is our, here is our uh, eigenvalue problem. We will solve it in the next question. So, to solve this uh, eigenvalue problem, because this is a second order the ODE, Ah, linear and uh, constant coefficients. Uh, there is a parameter lambda there, so uh, we need to distinguish three cases: lambda negative, lambda equals to zero, and lambda positive. So first, we consider the case that lambda is negative. When lambda is negative, uh, when, lam when lambda is negative, this ODE becomes. Uh, uh, sorry, the general solution of this ODE is. Linear combination of exponential, right? Okay. Linear combination of these two exponential function. That is the general solution. You should know this uh, because you have studied ordinary differential equation. Now, uh, then we need to uh, take in the boundary condition. The boundary condition is x0 equal to x1 equals to 0. Uh, we need to take this. Uh, boundary condition for capital X into account. So, uh, then X0 is 0, but uh, following the explanation, this, this is the boundary condition, okay? Following the explanation for capital X, we see that X0 is C1, or plus C2. Sorry, I have misprint here. Oh, here, here we should have a positive sign. Ah, X0 is C1 plus C2, okay? Then, the other boundary condition is x1 is also 0. But x1, x1 is what? Again, using the expression for x, capital X, using the expression for capital X given here, okay? We see the x1 is C1e. x1 is C1e to the square root of minus lambda. Uh, plus, uh, again, I'm mi missing a, plus C2e to the exponential, okay? Uh, so from this two equality, 
C1 plus C2 is zero. C1 exponential plus C2 exponential is also zero. From this, we can see that C1 equals to C2 equals to zero. Okay. Uh, although I have uh, misplained, the minus sign should be positive sign, but uh, this does not affect the conclusion that C1 and C2 are all zero. So when C1 and C2 are all zero, but our capital X is given by linear combination of exponential which coefficient C1 and C2, so since C1 and C2 are all zero, we conclude that X is identically zero. Okay? So X identically zero means that when lambda is negative, the eigenvalue problem can only has zero solution. It does not have no zero solution, which means that lambda is not an eigenvalue. Okay? We always solve the eigenvalue problem in this way. Uh, for the several cases, three cases for lambda, lambda negative, positive, and zero. Uh, so the case that lambda is negative, we, we have a complete. We know that such lambda could not be eigenvalue. Okay? Next, we consider the case that lambda is zero. So when lambda is zero, uh, the general solution uh, is ax plus b. Uh, this is obvious because the equation reduced to x double prime equals to zero. Uh, after integrating twice, you will see that x is a linear function. Okay? Then consider the boundary condition. Uh, we don't need to compute uh, because the code I used to generate these slides uh, is a uh, copy from my previous uh, uh, file so uh, some, some, uh, okay anyway for this x we consider the boundary taking the boundary condition into account so b is x zero but x zero is zero so b is zero then a is when b is x, when b is zero when b is zero you see that a is uh, x is a, a x but when a, when small x is one so a is the value of a capital x at one but this is zero so a is also zero so again, in this case, uh, both A and B are all zero. Uh, this means that uh, capital X is zero. So when lambda is zero, the only solution is the zero function, X identically zero. So this means that zero is not an eigenvalue, okay? Next, we consider the case that lambda is positive. So when lambda is positive, the general solution of the ODE in the eigenvalue problem, that is this ODE, okay, is linear combination of a cosine and a sine given here. So uh, applying the boundary condition, uh, x0 zero is 0, but x0 zero is C1 cosine 0 plus C2 sine 0, okay, but uh, since sine 0 is 0, this is simply C1, so we conclude that C1 is 0, and then by the other boundary condition, the boundary condition at the right end point of the stream, uh, x1. Uh, x1 is c1 cosine square root of lambda plus c2 sine square root of lambda. But we already know uh, from the previous equality, we already know that c1 is zero. Therefore, we, we, we simply have the c2 sine square root of lambda. Okay, uh, that is uh, the consequence of the boundary condition at the right end point, x equal to one. From this, um, C2 sine square root of lambda has to be zero. Okay? But, uh, sorry, I do not have this. Uh, this is also uh, due to copy. Okay? Copy the code. Therefore, <clears throat> okay, uh, how to say? We should have uh, C2 sine square root of lambda equals to zero. Okay? But uh, we don't want C2 to be zero. We already know, we already know that C1 is zero, right? If C2 is also zero, that means capital X is identically zero. Uh, so the solution is zero. So the lambda is not an eigenvalue. Since we are looking, we are looking for eigenvalue, we should assume that C2 is not zero. Otherwise, as I said before, if C2 is zero, then this means the capital X is zero, and the lambda is not an eigenvalue. So when you are looking for eigenvalue, you should not allow C2 to be zero. So you must have a sine square root of lambda to be zero. Okay, you should have this sine square root of lambda to be zero. From this, we see that lambda is n pi square, n from one, two, and so on. Okay, so this complete the solution of the eigenvalue problem. Okay, we know that uh, 
uh, all this lambda n, uh, since we have a sequence of eigenvalue n pi square, uh, we denote it by lambda n, and also we know that the eigen uh, co the corresponding eigenfunction is this. Why the eigenfunction is sine n pi x? You see, the solution, the general solution is linear combination of cosine and the sine. But uh, C1 is zero, so the first of the term disappear. So your, your, your solution to the eigenvalue problem, that is the eigenfunction, is C2 sine square root of lambda x. Ah, your solution is here, sorry. Your solution is only Your solution is here. This is your solution. But your lambda is n pi square. Therefore, eventually your solution is sine n pi x. Okay. So we, 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 we find the eigenvalue, we find the corresponding eigenfunction. This completes the solution for the eigenvalue problem. Okay. Now, the last step of this problem is to find the solution of our initial uh, boundary condition ah, to find the solution of our initial boundary condition mm. well our, ini our initial boundary condition of uh, problem sorry initial boundary problem that is our mathematical formulation is here okay so uh, to find the solution what we did we in our last steps, we we find the product solution, uh, product solution of this form, uh, product solution, and we find that capital T and the capital X satisfies uh, this ODE, uh, T double prime and the X double prime. The X double prime ODE combined with the boundary condition consists of the eigenvalue problem we just solved. Okay, but we know nothing about T. So we need to solve the ODE for T. We need to s oh. Sorry, what's wrong? We need to solve the ODE for T which the lambda the same lambda as the ODE for X. But those lambda are eigenvalues. Okay, those lambda are eigenvalues. So we need to solve this ODE phi, uh, where the lambda is uh, replacing by the eigenvalue we found before. Okay, now let's go back to our problem. Oh, okay. So for those lambda, that is our lambda n, n pi square. Uh, our solution, uh, as I said before, we need to solve this. As I said before, we need to solve this ODE. We need to solve this ODE for T. Okay? We need to solve this ODE for T. But this is easy because this is a, a second order linear constant coefficient ODE. We know how to solve it. Okay? So the ODE, maybe I should copy it here. T double prime plus 16 lambda T equals to zero. Note that our lambda, our lambda is lambda n. That is n pi square. So the e ODE becomes t double prime plus 4 n pi square t equals to 0. That is the ODE, right? So to solve this ODE, uh, we know that the solution of this ODE, solution of this ODE, uh, general solution of this ODE is linear combination of cosine 4 n pi t and the sine 4 n pi t. Okay, therefore, uh, uh, that is the general solution. But, uh, so, this general solution and uh, the eigenvalue xn and uh, the general solution tn, their product is a product solution of our wave equation. So, this is denoted by un. Okay, this un, uh, that is, the un is a, uh, x and x and t and x uh, t and t sorry t and the variable of t and is t so this is the product solution so this is t and t this is 
那边是全角卡路。OK， this is x n x， so this is u n、uh, as a product of x n x and t n t is a solution product solution of our product solution of our heat equal、uh, our wave equation satisfying the boundary condition 啊、uh,。You should、uh, remind yourself that this solution satisfies the boundary condition. Okay, satisfies the boundary condition. Why? Your boundary condition is uh, u um maybe u zero t equals u one t equals one, but our x because x n Is a solution of the eigenvalue problem, which、uh, which lambda equals to lambda n. So your x n zero is zero, x n one is zero zero. So this this means that, ah,、uh, this together means that, ah,、uh, your u n zero t equals x n zero t n t. Of course, this is zero. Similarly. U n one t is also zero, so this U n x t satisfies the wave equation, satisfies the boundary condition, okay? But、uh, we still need it to satisfy the、uh, the initial condition. So in general, this U n could not satisfy the initial condition. We need to using this U n to form a series ah、uh, summing them. All together, to get a series, ah,、uh, suppose u is the sum of this series, then we are hoping to find a n and b n, the corresponding coefficients a n and b n, so that such a u also satisfies the initial condition, ah.、Uh, so the idea is that because every u n satisfies. The equation, the PDE, no matter it is a wave equation or heat equation or Laplace equation, okay, U N satisfies PDE and the boundary condition, okay. The conclusion, as a consequence of the generalized principle of superposition, means that U equals to sigma U N also satisfies PDE. And、uh, the boundary condition. Okay. <clears throat> For example, let's verify the PDE. You see, U T T equals to sum of U N T T. In this step, we have already switched order of、uh, differentiation and summation. Or、uh, maybe maybe we should not go that that fast. Maybe. U T T is sigma U N T T. Ah,、uh, we switch the order of summation and this differentiation. This give you sigma U N T T. But U N satisfies the P D E means that U N T T equals sixteen U X X U N X X. Therefore, this give you sigma sixteen U N X X. Okay. Here, U N T T equals sixteen U N X X. Okay, but sixteen U N X X you can rewrite this by sixteen sigma U N X X. Of course, you move the sixteen out of the summation, and then you switch the order of differentiation and the summation. But this is just. Sixteen u x x. Okay, so this u, this u, the function defined as a series of all the product solution u n satisfies the P D E. Ah,、uh, we have a、uh, we have verified this here. Okay, so you should not doubt about this. Ah,、uh, this is true.、Uh, it satisfies the P D E. It also satisfies the boundary condition. Why? Why it satisfies the boundary condition? Because because you. U n zero t is zero. Every U n satisfies the boundary condition. Now the sum of U, U x zero, 
maybe I go to next page. So we, we know that unx0, sorry, un0t is 0. Therefore, u0t, since u is the sum of un, so that is un0t. Therefore, this is 0, the sum of 0. Therefore, it's 0. So this verifies that this u satisfies the boundary condition uh, at the left end point, x equals to 0. Similarly, it also satisfies that at the right end point, x equals to 1. So our this uh, argument shows that this u defined by the series satisfies the initial condition. Oh, sorry, satisfies the PDE. Th that is our wave equation and also satisfies the boundary condition. But uh, we don't know whether it satisfies the initial condition. To, to have this U satisfies the initial condition, you should, you should pick suitable coefficient An and Bn. So uh, we, we should try to find An and Bn such that this solution this solution, uh, by the form of uh, un, uh, eventually the uxt is this series. Uh, we, we want this to satisfy the initial condition. Uh, we want this. Uh, we want this function verified the initial condition. Uh, this is what we want. But uh, our initial condition involving uh, u when t equal to zero and also the uh, derivative of u with respect to t when t equal to zero uh, this is the initial position and this is the initial velocity okay uh, therefore uh, we, we need to compute the derivative of u with respect to t so uh, in the expression of u given Given here, okay, uh, we take the derivative which is back to t. So the left hand side is ut, is what we want. For the right hand side, for the right hand side, right hand side, you compute the derivative of the which is back to t for this series. We assume that you can switch the order. Firstly, you take the derivative which is back to t here, but we, we assume that you can switch the order of derivation and summation. So if you uh, switch the order, what you get? Uh, if you switch the order, if your derivative is taken is taken inside. Okay, this is switched order. But uh, the last term here, sign, does not depend on t. So if actually your derivative is taken with respect to this. Okay? So Oh, sorry. So actually, you want to take in derivative, which is back to t for this. But now, the derivative of sine four pi n t uh, is four pi n cosine four pi n t. Then you have a b n here, so you have b n. Okay. So uh, I write the derivative of the second term first. Ah, uh, then I consider the derivative of this part. Okay, the cosine part. For the cosine part, uh, you have minus four, minus four pi n sine. Then you have your a n. So I move the four pi n, the common four pi n, out of the here. Then I get what? I get uh, uh, the derivative of this is minus four pi n. Then four pi n is here. Then I have minus sine and the original a n copied here so a n sine 4 pi n t okay so this complete the computation of u t x t ah u t x t is given here okay now uh, I, uh, I need to go to the next page so I copy our computation I, I copy our expression for u and the u t u and the u t to the next page okay I copy okay here the first I just copy it here. So we should try to find suitable a n and b n so that the function u satisfies our 
initial condition initial condition is here i think uh, initial condition is here uh, when t equal to zero ah uh, u is zero and uh, u t is one subtract two cosine pi x uh, this is our initial condition so how to find a suitable a n and a b n so that it satisfies the initial condition well applying the initial condition uh, you, when t equal to zero u is zero but uh, you should let t equal to zero in the expression for you at the top of this page uh, that is when t equal to zero okay when t equal to zero uh, every term in the series the t is zero then cosine zero is one and the sine zero is zero okay therefore the the the, the, the green um, the, ex, the term in green disappear because when t equal to zero sine zero is zero so we only have a n hmm? uh, I should have cosine sorry uh, this is cosine this is a uh, misprint this is cosine 4 pi n t okay <clears throat> Oh, oh, oh I, I'm wrong. Sorry, no. Uh, I make a mistake. Right. I, I, I didn't make any uh, mistake. Sorry. Because when t equal to zero, this is one. This is one. So this contribute to the a n. So the sine n pi x, sine n pi x is copied from here. Okay. So in conclusion, uh from the expression for you, when t equal to zero, you see that uh, the the term in the summation becomes the term in the summation becomes a n one plus b n zero. Ah, uh, therefore that is a n. Then sine n pi x. This is quite easy. So we have this equality. We have this equality, right? This equality means that a n all the a n's are the coefficient of the Fourier sine expansion of the zero function of course all the a n are zero so we conclude that all the a n are zero okay next we use another boundary uh, initial condition that is the initial velocity uh, initial velocity is uh, where the according to the statement of the problem the initial velocity that is the derivative of u with respect to t uh, when t equal to zero this equals one minus two cosine pi x so uh, so this is uh, so so we have this equality but uh, using the second using the second expression that is uh, our expression for ut here using this this equality we see that ut x zero what's this so when uh, when t equal to zero, when t equal to zero, this is zero. Oh sorry, uh, cosine zero is one, and the sine zero is zero. So we get what we get. We get the four pi n b n. Four pi n b n sine n pi x. So u t x zero equals four pi n b n times sine n pi x. Okay. Remember this? So 4 pi n b n sine n pi x. So what this means? This means that this means that this coefficient 4 pi n b n all this 4 pi n b n are the fully are the coefficient of the fully sine series of the function uh, on the left hand side. Okay? Ah uh, I repeat again. Uh, this equality means that the coefficient the four pi n b n are the coefficient of the Fourier sine series of the function on the left hand side. One minus twice of cosine pi x. So using the formula for computing the Fourier uh, sine series, we see that the coefficient is two over l times the integral from zero to l. Uh, then the function fx you want to expand times the corresponding sine then take integral 
In our case, L is one. In our case, L is one. Therefore, this becomes. In our case, L is one. Uh, so this becomes two times the integral from zero to one, and our f x is this function, f x then sine n pi x. When l is when l is one, uh, the the variable in the sine is just n pi x. Okay, so you do the computation of this integral. Uh, you will have, you, uh, then divided by four pi n, you will obtain your b n. So which a n equal to zero? Look at the top of this page. The top of this page. Uh, if a n is, we already know that a n is zero. Then computing the b n, uh, using the equality after you, uh, after you evaluating the integral at the bottom of this page, you have an equality for b n. Then so the solving the equality, you can uh, write down. Uh, the explicit expression for Bn, substituting your Bn back to the top here. Okay? Ah. Substituting your Bn here, then you obtain the U. This U is the solution of our initial boundary problem. Ah, this completes the solution of problem one in this test. Okay? Now, uh, let's go to the next problem. Problem two. Ah, uh, we are required to solve this uh, Laplace equation. U y y plus u x x equal to zero. Of course, this is also the same as u x x plus u y y. Uh, you can switch u x x and uh, u y y. Uh, okay. Then the the equation is set in the plane region. The plane region. So since it mentioned the region, we need to draw the coordinate system x from 0 to 3 and y from 0 to pi okay this is our coordinate system then uh, this this is a rectangle right this is the rectangle the, the reason is the rectangle ah. now this, uh, the U satisfies zero Newman condition on the edge, that is the boundary of the rectangle. Uh, the edge y equal to zero and y equal to pi. So the edge y equal to zero is this part. So, this part. Uh, zero Newman condition at this part and uh, y equal to pi, that is the top boundary. Okay? At these two part, we are imposed zero Newman condition. Now, uh, I have already explained the Newman boundary condition. Newman boundary condition means d u d n. n is the normal uh, unit normal outward uh, vector to the boundary. Okay, but in our case, in our case, let's consider the bottom boundary. Ah, for the bottom boundary here, n is what? n is the x, uh, the first component of n is 0. The second component is minus 1. Okay? But the, the normal derivative of u equals to what? Equals to the gradient of u dot product with n. Ah, you can consider this. You can consider that this as the definition of a uh, normal uh, derivative or directional derivative. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. <clears throat> then anyway, the directional derivative equals the gradient of the function dot product which the direction. That is our n here. But the gradient of u is what? The gradient of u is u x u y. Then you dot n. Don't you, then you see that this is precisely minus u y. Right? Because n is 0 minus 1. Uh, so the dot product of u x u y with 0 minus 1 give you just minus u y. So 
So the zero Newman condition on the edge y equal to zero explicitly means that uh, minus u y is zero here on the bottom boundary. Similarly, you will by the same argument you will see that on the top boundary, on the top boundary. Mm. the normal derivative is just ui okay because in that case our n is not zero minus one anymore uh, it's not it's not zero minus one anymore in on, on the on the top boundary n is just zero one so uh by the same uh, calculation as the bottom of my 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 uh my handwriting, you will see that the normal derivative on the top boundary is just ui. So this is also zero Newman condition. So ui is zero here on the top. Okay, so we have explained the zero Newman condition on the upper edge and the bottom edge of the boundary. Okay, but we still need the other boundary condition on the left and the right boundary, okay? The boundary consists of four segments. I will already settle down uh, the condition on the bottom and the top, but still the left and right, we, we know nothing. But the problem says that on the left of the boundary, left of the boundary, that is this part. Maybe I will use uh, what color? Yes, this part. This part of the boundary, u is what? u is 3y, right? u is 3y, when x equal to 0, that means the left boundary. Here, u is 3y. And uh, at the right boundary, that is when x equal to 3, ah, when x equal to 3, the boundary condition here is 2y pi minus y. Ah, that is, that, this is the analysis of our problem. Okay, so with this information, we can state the problem mathematically as required by the problem, and then we will try to solve this problem. Okay, now the mathematical formulation first goes to the equation, then boundary condition. Okay, uh, this is the boundary condition at the bottom boundary when y equal to zero and the at the top boundary, when y equal to pi, uh, as I explained before, uh, uh, at these two part of the boundary, uh, we are impose the in, we are imposing the um, Newman homogeneous Newman condition or zero Newman condition, uh, and the Newman condition I emphasize the Newman condition is the uh, condition uh, on the normal derivative of u on the boundary, but uh, in our case the normal boundary. Uh, sorry, the normal derivative is uh, simply the derivative with respect to y. Okay, therefore, <clears throat> because we are imposing zero Newman condition on y equal to zero and y equal to pi, this leads to this boundary condition. Okay, next, uh, we consider the other two boundary, that is left and right, which was imposed which will impose the, uh, the, hey, what's wrong? The Dirichlet uh, boundary condition. When x equal to zero, y, uh, u is three y. When x equal to three, u is two pi times, uh, two y times pi minus y. So this consists of the mathematical formulation for this problem. Uh, so we are, we, we need to solve this, uh, uh, Laplace equation impose the mixed boundary condition. Uh, on two part of the two segment of the boundary, we have a Newman boundary condition, which are homogeneous because because they equal to zero here. So this is homogeneous. And then uh, we have a Dirichlet boundary condition on the other segment of the boundary. Ah, okay. So that is the mathematical formulation. Now having uh, state the problem mathematically. Uh, 
we need to solve the problem. The first step, that is the first question of this problem, is to find the product solution and uh, state the corresponding eigenvalue problem. As before, our equation is uxx plus uyy is zero. That is our equation. To find the product solution, we try to find solution of this form, uh, which uh, of the form that a function of small x times a function of small y, uh, that is capital X and capital Y. And as before, we need to compute the partial derivative of this u for those, pa for those partial derivative appears in the equation. But we have uxx and uyy, so you need to compute the ux and uyy for this, for this u, for this product solution. Uh, you need to compute the corresponding ux x and the uyy. Of course, it is, it is easy. Well, uyy is xy double prime, and the ux x is x double prime y. So substituting your computation of ux x and uyy into the equation, you get minus x double prime y equals xy double prime. Okay. Then divide both sides of the equality. Divide both sides of of this equality by x y, you obtain this equality. Now, for this equality, the left hand side is a function of a small x. The right hand side is a function of a small y. So, <coughs> the common value has to be a constant, lambda, minus lambda. Okay. So from this, we have x double ply minus lambda x x zero, and the y double ply plus lambda y is zero. So we obtain the two ODE for the capital X and the capital Y. Now to state the eigenvalue problem, to state the eigenvalue problem, <clears throat> you need to impose some uh, boundary condition for your function, for your single variable function. Okay. Now we encounter a problem. What kind of eigenvalue problem should we uh, consider? You may consider. The You may consider that x double ply minus lambda x is zero, and the x at the boundary. Boundary is what for x is zero, and uh, three. Uh, this is a possibility. The other possibility is that y double ply plus lambda y is zero, and the y zero and the y pi. Okay, maybe maybe you should take derivative. Okay, maybe you should take derivative uh, for x and for or for y. Depending, uh, you need to choose which is the suitable function to make your eigenvalue problem. If you choose x to construct your eigenvalue problem, you should consider this possibility. Otherwise, if you choose y, then you need to consider the, this case. Okay, but which is the proper case for our problem? So this depends on the boundary condition you are considering, okay? Uh, oh no! This depends on the boundary condition you are considering. So in our case, here we are we are considering the problem in a rectangle. We have what? We have. Uh, Maybe we have u y equals to zero, u y equals to zero on the bottom and the top of the boundary, and then we have u equal to something not zero, and u equal to something also not zero on the on the right and the left boundary. So, uh, for eigenvalue problem, the function has to be zero. The function or its derivative has to be zero on the boundary. Okay? If the function is zero on the boundary, or its derivative is bound uh, zero. Or you can uh, the function is zero at one endpoint of the interval and uh, the derivative is zero on the other at the other end point. This is also okay. But uh, since you need homogeneous boundary condition Okay, all our eigenvalue problems are homogeneous ODE. Uh, our 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 
eigenvalue problem looks like this. Um, of course, this positive sign in front of lambda is not relevant. If if it is his minus sign, you consider minus lambda. Uh, so this is not important. But uh, the important thing is that you should have x zero is zero, x maybe l is zero. You see, uh, this is a kind of eigenvalue problem. Sometimes we need derivative. This is another kind of both and you have derivative. Uh, all these are okay, but but the most important thing is that you should be zero on the end point at the end point. You should be zero at the end point. This is important. So in our case, in our case, because our u y is zero, and uh, okay. For the u x, uh, for, for, sorry, for u, when x equal to zero and x equal to three, u is not zero. So correspondingly, we should choose this y. We should choose y as the right, as we should choose y as our function to make up our eigenvalue problem. Okay. Ah, uh, so uh, all this is that we have two. Uh, let's go back to our uh, construction of the eigenvalue problem. Ah, so after uh, separate separation of variables, we are little to ODE. Both of them are second ordered, and uh, the, the unknown function are capital X and capital Y respectively. But as I said, uh, we have two possibility to form the eigenvalue problem. Uh, one is consider the equation for capital X. The other is consider the function of capital Y. But uh, which one is the correct one? Uh, Simply, since we have a, a homogeneous eigen, uh, sorry, we have a homogeneous boundary condition on y. When y equal to zero and y equal to pi, uh, u u or is derivative, which is is partial derivative, is zero. So we need to take the second one. That is the problem for y. Okay, when you working with the Equation for y, that is this ODE for y, you can state your homogeneous boundary, uh, homogeneous boundary uh, problem for the ODE, that is the eigenvalue problem. If you try to work with x, you could not do this, because the boundary condition, when x equal to 0, and when x equal to 3, you do not have a homogeneous boundary condition. Okay, so let's do this. Huh? So, since our boundary condition on you, uh, are imposed one, uh, sorry, uh, <coughs> imposed on the puzzle derivative with respect to you. That is our Newman boundary condition. So we use this condition. Uh, remember, our boundary condition is that our boundary condition is u y is zero when y equal to zero and y equal to pi. Okay, this means that. Uh, this means that we should uh, use u y x zero is zero, but u y is just x y prime. So this x x y prime zero is zero. Again, y prime zero has to be zero. Otherwise, x x is capital X is identically zero. When capital X is identically zero, then your u here is also identically zero. The trivial solution we don't want. So. Y prime zero has to be zero, okay. Similarly, consider the boundary when y equal to pi. As ah, uh, you see that y prime pi is zero. Now, the ODE for y and the, the boundary condition for y prime at the end point of the interval zero and the pi consists of the eigen value problem for y. That is the ODE. Then the boundary condition. Y prime zero and y pi is zero. So this uh, complete the the second question for the problem. Ah uh, we we state the product solution and find the corresponding eigenvalue problem. Okay. Next uh, we need to solve the eigenvalue problem. So to solve this eigenvalue problem,
to solve this eigenvalue problem, we saw distinct these several cases, lambda negative, lambda positive, and lambda equals to zero. So first we consider the case that lambda is negative. When lambda is negative, uh, the general solution of the ODE is a linear combination of exponential functions. Okay? Now, because our condition on y is y prime, so you need to compute y prime. So y prime is also linear combination of exponential of minus lambda, square root of minus lambda y. Uh, and uh, okay, that is y prime. Now applying our boundary condition, that y prime zero is zero, we see that uh, using the expression for y prime, when small y equals to zero, we see that y prime is just the same one, square root of minus lambda subtract to say two, square root of minus lambda. What's wrong? Okay, sorry. Okay, that is y prime zero. Then, uh, you consider the other end point of the interval, that is pi. When small y equal to pi, again, using the expression for y prime, you see that y prime pi equals uh, this expression. Uh, so, from these two expressions, uh, you consider this as a system of two linear equations, one, two unknowns, say one and say two. Uh, I, I think you have learned linear algebra. Using linear algebra, uh, you can solve this equation. Uh, then you see that C1 and C2 are all zero. So when C1 and C2 are all zero, your y here is a zero function. So this means that when lambda is negative, the only solution for your eigenvalue problem is y identically zero. Therefore, y is not, uh, sorry, lambda is not an eigenvalue. Every negative lambda is not an eigenvalue, okay? Now, we consider the case lambda is zero. So, when lambda is zero, the general solution is capital Y equals to AY plus B. Ah, this is easy. And then, Y prime is just A. But our boundary condition is that Y prime zero and the Y prime pi are all zero. Then, A has to be zero. But B has no restriction. B is free. So this means that for every no no zero no constant function, y identically equal to b is solution no zero solution of y double prime plus zero y equal to zero y prime zero equal y prime pi equals to zero. So zero is an eigenvalue. Uh, zero is an eigenvalue, and the uh, constant function are all uh, eigenfunctions. So, since zero is an eigenvalue denoted by lambda zero, the corresponding eigenfunction we can take the constant function y zero identically equals to one. Okay, so this completes the case that lambda is zero. Finally, we consider the case that lambda is positive. So. When lambda is positive, the general solution of the ODE is linear combination of a cosine and a sine. And as before, since our boundary condition involving y prime at the end point of the interval, though we need to compute y prime, which is also linear combination of a sine and a cosine, this is easy. Then applying the boundary condition, we see that y prime zero is zero, but on the other hand, by the expression of y prime, we see that y prime zero is just linear combination of a sine zero and a cosine zero. But the sine zero is zero here, sine zero is zero, so you, you only have C2, square root of lambda. So this means that C2 is zero, because our lambda is positive, therefore the square root of lambda could not be zero, so C2 has to be zero. Then, by the other Boundary condition when small y equal to zero. That is we considering the boundary condition at the right end point of the boundary uh, of the interval zero pi. So y prime pi is this. Okay? Y prime pi is this. But uh, remember our C2 is zero. C2 is zero here. So we only has one term. Uh, we only have the first term, the second term is zero. So, 
since we already know C2 is zero, we don't want C1 to be zero as well. C1 has to be no zero. Because we already know that C2 is zero. If C1 is also zero, then Y is zero. Then such lambda is not an eigenvalue. Okay? Therefore, uh, C1 could not be zero. So C1 not zero, but uh, C1, C1 times square root of lambda sine pi square root of lambda is zero. But C1 is not zero. Therefore, sine square root of lambda has to be zero. Okay? Because C1 is not zero. Why C1 is not zero? Because we already have C2 zero. If C1 is also zero, then the capital Y is identically zero. Then the lambda is not eigenvalue. So if you want to find eigenvalue lambda, the lambda has to satisfy this condition. Sine pi square root of lambda equals to zero. Okay, from this we see that uh, we have a sequence of eigenvalue. Lambda can be one square, two square, three square, and so on. In general, lambda for every integer n, we have n square. We, we see that n square is an eigenvalue. So we have a sequence of eigenvalue. Lambda n, well, n from 1, 2, and so on, and the corresponding eigenfunction is cosine ny. This is the corresponding eigenfunction. Why this is the eigenfunction? Let's go back to the expression for y. The expression for y. Okay? We already have C2, 0. Therefore, this term disappear. So, the eigenfunction is a multiple of cosine. Square root of lambda, y. But lambda is n square. So, that is cosine ny. Okay? The eigenfunction corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda n is cosine ny. Okay? It's a multiple of cosine ny. Of course, the coefficient we can take 1. Uh, okay? Uh, so, this solves the eigenvalue problem. Okay? The last question in this problem is to find solution of our problem. Uh, solution of our this problem. Okay, solution of this problem. Okay. Solution of this problem. How to do this? Well, Uh, now we, we already know why. Why is cosine ny, right? Why is cosine ny? But uh, we, we don't know x yet. So we need to find the x. For every eigenvalue, lambda equals lambda n. Uh, in our consideration here, oh, oh what's wrong? Sorry. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, here, n is 1, 2, and so on, but we remember, n, uh, 0 is also an eigenvalue, whose eigenfunction is constant function 1. So, this lambda n equal n square can, and y n equal cosine ny, uh, also valid when n equals to 0. So that it can, this sequence can, Include the case the zero eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenfunction. Okay, so the eigenvalue are n square now n from zero n is zero one two and so on. So for those lambda n for those lambda equals to lambda n, we need to solve the ODE for x. Ah, uh, this ODE is x double prime minus lambda x equal to zero okay we need to solve this ode to solve this ode we see that lambda is n square therefore x double prime minus n square x equal to zero so you we have to distinguish two cases n is zero and is not zero when n is zero this ode reduces to x double prime equals to zero therefore x 
the corresponding x denoted by x, the corresponding solution denoted by x0 is a linear function of x. Now, when n is non-zero, n is 1, 2, 3, and so on, we have a, the general solution is a linear combination of exponential function, we denote it by xn. The co coefficient of the linear combination uh, we also denote it by an and bn. Uh, they depend, we, we assume that they depend on n, okay? Uh, some students in their paper just write a1 and a b1. Or simple, or even a b. Okay, this will, this is not good, a good idea. You should denote it by a n and b n. They depend for every n. You choose different coefficients. Okay. Well, then having obtained that x n, including the case n equal to zero, that is x zero, ah, uh, the product solution is <coughs> our product solution. Our product solution is x y but uh, since you have a sequence uh, you have a sequence of x n and uh, y n then the product solution will also denote by u n oh u n right that is u n x y equals x n x y n y now when n is zero y n y zero is one okay uh, and therefore, u0 xy is a x plus b. Uh, u0 does not depend on y. Okay? And then, for the other n, n1, 2, 3, and so on, your un xy is x n x y n y, which is uh, by the expression of x n and uh, y n. y n is the eigen function cosine n y. So you see, this is your u n. Now, uh, this u n satisfies what? Uh, you can check. This u n satisfies. Our, our PDE. Our PDE is uxx plus uyy equals to zero. Ah, this un satisfies the ODE. Also satisfies the boundary condition. This un also satisfies the boundary condition. On the uh, bottom, on the bottom, we impose the Newman condition. On the top, we also impose the homogeneous Newman condition. So, so this product solution satisfies boundary condition at this part of the boundary, the, the top and the bottom. Okay, but maybe not on the left and the right right boundary. Okay, uh, the idea to find the solution also satisfies the boundary condition on left and the top part of the boundary, we summed all this u um, up to form a series which defines a function u. Ah, this function u, which the undetermined a n b n, and also the small a n small b, small a n small b are also undetermined. We should find, try to find, we should try to find the suitable value of this coefficient so that this corresponding u, this corresponding u n, uh, satisfies the boundary condition. Also satisfies the boundary condition on the left and the right segment of the boundary. Okay. Now the series sigma u n, when n is zero, that is u zero. Therefore, this is a, a x plus b. And then from uh, uh, n greater than zero, n from one, two, three, and so on. So, so this last line oh, on the one my slides is the explicit expression for u. You can check this u. U verifies the PDE. Also, the boundary condition on the top and the bottom. We verified the PDE. on the boundary condition on the top, the bottom is y equal to zero and the, the top is y equal to pi. As you can check, okay? Ah, the, to check this, the idea is the same. Ah, you, because on the top and the, on the bottom, on the top and the, on the bottom, you, you have ui. 
uh, on the top of the on the on the on the top and on the bottom, uh, boundary condition are imposed on by u y. So you need to compute the u y. So from the expression of u, from our expression of u, you see what? You see your u y is the sum of u um taking derivative with respect to y, but this is just assume that we can. Uh, switch the order of summation and the differentiation, then this allow us to write this. Okay. Then this is what u n u n is x n y n. So this is x n y n prime. Okay. But y n all the y n's are solution of our eigenvalue problem. So we know that y n prime zero is zero, y n prime pi is also zero. So from this, ah, from this, okay, from the, oh, oh, sorry. From this and the, the last line I written here, you will see that u y when y is zero, x is arbitrary when y is zero. This gives you sigma x n x y n prime zero. Okay, that is zero. Every term, every term in this series are all zero. Therefore, the sum is zero. This means that the u construct here as the sum of all the un satisfies the boundary condition at the bottom of this uh, rectangle. That is when y equals to zero. Similarly, you can verify that it satisfies the boundary condition at the top of the rectangle. Okay. So in conclusion, the u given here, the u given here as the sum of ax plus b and the sum of this series sigma n from 1 to infinity a n exponential plus b n exponential cosine n y satisfies the PDE, satisfies the boundary condition, satisfies the boundary condition at the bottom and at the top, but not necessarily on the right and the, on the left and the right part of the boundary. So to make sure that this u satisfies also the boundary condition at the left part or right part of the boundary, we need to choose the coefficient small a, small b, and the capital A and capital B and suitably. Okay, how to do this? Uh, the idea is the same based on Fourier uh, series or Fourier expansion. So to continue our uh, discussion, I will copy this uh, expression for you to the next page, okay? So u is ax plus b plus the sum of this. Then we want this u satisfies the boundary condition at the left part of the boundary. That is when x equal to zero. That is this part of the boundary, right? Ah, we just uh, let x equal to zero. So when x equal to zero, according to our boundary condition, our boundary condition says that our boundary condition says that u zero y is three y. Okay, so u zero y is three y. But uh, by the expression for u given at the top of this page, uh, set x equal to zero, we see that u zero y is simply b plus the sum of uh, the series. But uh, in the sum of the series, you should let x to be zero because you you are taking x to be zero, right? So the x here is zero. This is zero. Therefore. This part of the coefficient becomes a n plus b n. So 3y equals b plus the sum of cosine n y, which is coefficient a n plus b n. Okay. This means that. This means that. Uh, no, we, we, we will uh, let it be. Then we consider the other boundary condition. That is when x equal to 3. So when x equal to 3 u 3y, but my, our boundary condition is that u 3y is 2y pi minus y. Okay, so from this, 
When x equal to 3, uh, u3y is 2y pi minus y. Again, uh, substituting x by 3 in the expression for u at the top of this page, we see that u3y equals to 3a plus b plus the series, right? But for the series, again, the x is replaced by y, by, by, by 3, because you are considering the value when x equal to 3 here. Okay, so you set the x by 3, uh, you see that the result is 3a plus b, then plus the sum of a n exponential of 3n plus b n exponential of minus 3n, then you have cosine n y here. Okay, so this means that b, the b here, and the a n plus, maybe I change the color. Maybe not. Okay. This means that the B here and the AN plus BN, that is this first set of numbers, are the Fourier, are the coefficient of the Fourier sine uh, cosine series for this function, 3y. Okay. On the other hand, On the other hand, uh, the two three a plus b and uh, all this this a little complicated a n exponential something okay. These are the Fourier co coefficient of the Fourier cosine series of this function. Okay. So uh, we have a formula to compute these coefficients. So we conclude that. B is what? B is since B is the B is the Fourier co B is the F Fourier cosine coefficient of three y. So we have a we have a formula to compute this series. So B is one over pi, uh, zero pi, uh three y dy integral, right? Remember, for Fourier coefficients, your a n is L over 2, 0 to L, fx cosine, cosine, uh, <clears throat> maybe, maybe, okay, create a new page, uh, our an is 2 over L, 0 L, the function to be expanded, of course, in our study of that section in the textbook, uh, our function, the variable of our function is denoted by x, but you can also denote it by y. This is not important. Then you have cosine n pi y l dy. That is the formula to compute the Fourier uh, cosine coefficients. Okay, but our b is half of a zero. Therefore, b is half of, of a zero. Therefore, it is L over 1 over L, 0 L, and N is 0, therefore you simply Fy dy. But Fy is 3y here, okay, Fy is 3y. So this is the formula to compute the B, where B is uh, 3 over 2, 3 over 2 pi, okay. And for the other, for the An plus Bn, An plus Bn is what? A n plus B n is just the A n, which is L zero pi L f x cosine n pi. Oh, sorry, f y. In our case, f y. N pi y L d y. But in our case, L is pi. L is pi. Therefore, that is. Ah, our fy is 3y, so this, uh, so an plus bn, an plus bn is just, an plus bn is just the an, the Fourier cosine coefficient of the function. So this is given by, um, by the uh, formula at the bottom of this page, okay? Now, next, uh, now I copy. Ah, 
for this part above this line is the result I copy from the bottom of this previous page uh, so that we can, uh, can use it later but the 3a plus b 3a plus b is the zero coefficient of the Fourier cosine expansion of 2y pi minus y Therefore, 3a minus b plus b should be half of a zero, which is, uh, as before, is uh, 1 over pi, 0 pi, 2 pi, okay? And uh, this integral is easy to evaluate, okay? And also, finally, finally, the very complicated, this part, this part is the Fourier the an, for Fourier cosine expansion of 2y pi minus y, okay? So, uh, by our formula, uh, we learned from our lecture on the textbook, we know that this complicated expression, okay? But as I said before, this is just the coefficient for the expansion for 2y pi minus y, okay? So a n e three n plus b n e minus three n. This is just uh, by the formula to compute a n. Uh, to the formula is here, okay? You see that mm, you can compute the evaluating this integral. So eventually, what we need to determine, the, we need to determine, the, we need to determine the small a small b and the capital A M and the capital B M. This is what we need to find. But we have four equality. We have this four equation. This four equation are B already determined. Uh, deter compute B already we already know that B is three over two pi. So using this B from the third equation, three A plus B equals a third of pi square, we can determine A. Okay, so small A, small B are determined. Small a and a small b you can determine, the, okay? For capital A and a capital B, then this and this they equal to some number, say alpha n. Assume that the integral is alpha n and beta n. Assume that this integral, maybe this integral equals alpha n after the computation, and this integral. It's beta n after computation. Then you have a n plus b n equals alpha n, and three n a n plus exponent of minus three n b n equals to beta n. Right. So this is a system of a linear equation, which two unknowns a n and b n. So using linear algebra. As long as you can compute these two integral to evaluating to, to find ex explicit expression for alpha n and beta n, then you can solve this system of linear algebraic equation to find capital A n and capital B n. So which is small a small b capital A n and capital B n determined in this procedure, then the function u, the function u given here. The function you given here, is the solution of our uh, boundary value problem for the Laplace equation. Okay, so this uh, complete the solution of our test.